So Alhamdulillah, welcome everyone to another How I Learn Arabic story. I am here with my brother Abdul Fattah Mubasharatan min Al Madina Al Munawara. Salam alaikum, bro. Alaikum salam, rahmatullah, barakatuh. It's good, bro. I'm good, man. How is uh, how is the weather in Medina? Ah, it's pretty hot. I need to say, like, um, <laughs> it's uh, it's pretty hot. But alhamdulillah, you know, every everything is AC. Car is AC. The ghurfa is AC. No. So it's oh, pretty okay. good. Oh, okay. Or even in ghurfa tulab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You got it. it's impossible. Akhi. It's so hot. You need to have an AC. Yeah. So, uh, is it because I know they had like the old buildings and the new buildings? Do they have this in the old buildings as well? Yeah, I'm in an old building actually. That's oh, an okay. old room. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. They they do you good then. Alhamdulillah. Hey, I heard, alhamdulillah. I, I always heard some Ayo? stories about like students living in the same dorm and you know one puts the AC like like crazy uh, in the night and then the other one is like, yo, bro, like you know. Alhamdulillah, I need to say my Allah bless me with a very good roommate. He's from Algeria. May Allah protect him. Amen. And we never argued. Like he takes my stuff, I take his stuff. If he okay. feels the AC, he puts it on. If I feel it, I put it on. So Alhamdulillah, with, Allah bless me with a very good roommate, which is very important if you are in an environment like this. No, Alhamdulillah. Okay, so just for the viewers to give them a little bit of context, because obviously I'm talking here like you know they already know like you're in Medina, but uh, I would like yeah. you to explain a little bit like you know a little bit about you really and how you got to Medina. Okay, um, you want me to start way back or you want me to start how I came to Medina? I want you to give you, I want you to give us like a way back kind of throwback kind of thing, but at the same okay. time, you know, make it like five minutes, not even. Aye, 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 aye. So everything started 2014. I mm -hmm. came to make Umrah and then I went and I signed up to, I had a Muqabla, which is next to my building now, subhanAllah. Mm -hmm. I went to, I had the muqabal over there, and then they asked me basic questions, like, um, what's the arkan al iman? Because if they see you from Switzerland, I'm from Switzerland, so if they see that there's no da'wah, it's like a lot, not a lot of Muslimin, so they make it easy on you, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So they asked me basic questions, and then I had to wait three years, because in mm -hmm. that gap, they accepted nobody from 2014 to 2017, and a lot of people can relate to that. I remember, I, so, I definitely relate to that. <laughs> <laughs> so, in that meanwhile, I w I w it was like end of 2015, I was like, man, I can't just be in Switzerland, like, I can't just wait, you know what I'm saying? And, Where and I made the step the to Egypt. Because I used to live in Switzerland in is uh, it's pretty much in the heart of Europe, it's between Italy, yeah, but Germany, I mean, like, what, the north. What, what city, I mean? Oh, in Zurich. Egypt. Zurich, okay, okay. No, I'm saying that because yeah, I used to live in Geneva. Part. So I know Geneva. Oh, really? Well. Yeah. Okay. What's but good? Like, okay, more, I didn't know. It's more of a French uh, city, yeah? Zurich yeah. Is a little bit English. Yeah. Right? Oh, okay. Zurich is German, German. Oh, okay. More German. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So then you got to Egypt? Yes. So in Egypt, I was, brothers can tell you, I was doing dua every day. Oh, may Allah give me Medina. May Allah give me Medina. May Allah give me Medina and all of that. And that's how it basically happened. And, he, and of course, with the dua of my mother, mm -hmm. I used to tell her, Mom, make dua. Like, I, I want to go to no. Medina, you know? No. So, alhamdulillah, with the uh, blessing of Allah, uh, I got accepted. And now I'm like, when I'm here, I came October 2017. I came to mm -hmm. Medina. And now it's what? Uh, May 2019. So, I May would say it was that, like, yeah. year and a half. Year yeah, and a half. Something, in, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, so, alhamdulillah. Is amazing. But uh, how it comes then you have a... I mean, you sound, you sound American to me. <laughs> uh, the thing is, when I was younger, I was very interested in languages. And I speak different languages. And that's any as a ni'mah from Allah. Mm -hmm. So I moved to Egypt. So when I moved to Egypt, that's where I met brothers like Hanif. And like brothers that I, I started to... like. I would like I just walk with American. I, that's how I became like um, Americanized. Yeah. And people tell me, yo, you sound like from America. You sound like from Canada. 
Toronto or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, shout out to Hanif, by the way, man. We actually connected, indirectly connected with like really, yeah. you know, really close connections, actually. Uh, mashallah. Yeah, shout out, shout out yeah, to him. Good brother. So, yeah, very uh, good brother, mashallah. Hopefully we have him. Uh, <laughs> hopefully I can interview him. Inshallah, yeah. I'll see him doing this, actually. You know, he's like super, super uh, he, he, on his corner kind of thing. But yeah, yeah. inshallah. Um, طيب, alhamdulillah. So, so how long did you stay in Egypt then? It was... Uh, I stayed. My trip in Egypt, actually, was uh, a lot of things happened. But I left from Switzerland in October 2015 mm-hmm. to end of yani, December 2016 so a month a year and two months oh, okay alhamdulillah okay alhamdulillah yeah. so so okay so you i guess you went to egypt because you were okay let me at least as i'm waiting for medina inshallah let me benefit yeah. and learn arabic etc et yeah okay so yeah, yeah yeah just to make sure you in switzerland you didn't have no level of, of arabic right um, the thing is, my auntie, she's married to a Yemeni, so mm-hmm. and I was a lot in their house, so I was hearing it in the background a lot. No. It's not like a person that became Muslim and he never heard Arabic and he no. went. So I knew like كيف حالك, اسمي هكذا, يعني you know just بسيط أمور like small talk, no, like no, very no, no. small talk based. No, so but. Uh, your, your I wasn't that guy well. that was like, oh, I'm sorry. I see your, your origins as well. Um, where are they? East African, right? Somali or? Yeah, my father is Eritrean, rahimahullah, and uh, my mother is Somali. Right. So you have a lot of uh, you know vocabulary in there as well, a little bit, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, alhamdulillah. Like dira. Wow. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, There's a lot of things, man. Yeah. It's a lot of things like it, it, it happens on a daily basis where I'm like, oh really? That's what it means? That's that's the same word in Somali, man. No. It happens to me a lot. <laughs> no, <laughs> definitely. Okay, so um, okay, so we said you didn't have no basics basically before you went to. Yeah. I mean, you had ba- you had like you know the kind of like the sweet talk yeah. kind of thing as we say. Yeah. Okay, so so not knowing Arabic, right? Before you even decided to learn Arabic, what was you frustrated about not knowing Arabic? I was, I was, we had classes, Jazallah Khair, uh, our Imam in the Masjid at uh, that time, Sheikh Khalid. He was giving, he was teaching us in Arabic, and we always had to, like, somebody had to translate, and then somehow he did not really understand what the Sheikh was saying. So you, I was feeling like, man, I can't, like, I need to understand what he's saying, you know what I mean? No. So that was one of the main frustrations because, mashallah, he used to teach like every second day. And I was just sitting there like, man, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't do this. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I need to learn Arabic. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've been sitting in this simultaneously translation kind of doros. It's just like, Yeah, this, yeah. I mean, it kind of helps if you're taking notes because sometimes the sheikh might be go, might be going so fast. So you know, yeah, while they translate, you have time too. But uh, you know, still, it's it's just it's just frustrating. But uh, okay, yeah. so what secretly you desired the most of the Arabic language? I was just like, I want to be able to open up a the Quran or Kitab of Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, Ibn Qayyim and just be like, yes, man, I understand. Like, you know, I understand. It touches my heart when I read uh-huh. what Ibn Qayyim says about the heart or what when Allah talks about the people of Iman and the people of Kuf. Like, you want to mm-hmm. feel that. And that was my main drive. I was, and because I'm, as I told you, I like languages a lot, but this is like no. the most powerful language and this is the language of the Quran. So, that was my main motivation. No, definitely. So, what yeah. what languages do you know? Um, you just put me on the spot like that. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was born in Italy. Okay, I was born in no. Rome, Italy. So that's where where my Italian came. Of course, my mother being Somali, that's a Somali. Then I moved to Switzerland, 
And in Switzerland, we have three main languages, which is French, German, and Italian. So I learned French and German in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. And as you see, I speak English. <laughs> no. And on the way, alhamdulillah, I've learned uh, uh, Arabic. So put together is six languages. Switzerland, in my city, we speak another lahja, which is like derived from like the fusha of German. Mm -hmm. The people in Germany don't understand us, but we understand them. So it's, okay. I would say six, but people would say seven, but I, I would say six. Right. It's kind of like the Catalan yeah. in, in Spain, as we have yeah. it. Like, yes. we understand Spanish, but Spanish can't understand us. Yeah. 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 Let's put it like so, that. So, okay, so what do you say that knowing all of these languages and having this foundation in all of these different you know, huruf and all of these different, uh, yani, uh, you know, different pronunciations, etc. Do you think that you had uh, an advantage over everyone else in terms of learning the Arabic language? I would say, Akhib, that every language that you add to your own, own yani, personality, it opens you up a little bit more about, like, in general. Mm -hmm. Like, it gives you, it gives you, like, Okay, that's how. Now I understand why French people move like that. Now I understand why yeah, yeah, yeah. Spanish people like that. Now I understand why, yeah. from that perspective, like the psychological, it helped me a lot because I I wasn't I, I never felt strange being around these type of people. Mm -hmm. But um, I would say learning Arabic, um, it, it's more that I have maybe the background and somehow the words and like the the structure of the somali language and all of that i think that's what helped me more no yeah definitely what you said about like it's it's true that you know the le learning a language it gives you a lot of context in terms of the culture of that language yeah yeah and that's so true Spanla. that's so true okay so so what was the time frame? Once you decided, okay, man, I need to learn this language to the point where you was mm. actually, okay, let me actually start making moves. Let me go. You yeah. asked me from, from when I decided to leave to learn Arabic until I actually left, right? Yeah. So I remember I had a pretty good job, but then I ended up not having that job. Mm -hmm. And it was like March. So it was a six month gap where I was like, what should I do, man? And then I was, one day I was sitting in a masjid. That was like summer. I would say like August. Mm -hmm. And then a brother was like, bro, why don't you go to Egypt to learn Arabic? So I was like, what you mean, bro? Like, what, what you mean? He said, you know, I was there for six months in Alexandria and all of that. I was like, okay, so tell me more, you know? So we started to sit down and he explained me like, that's how you do it. That's where you go. That's where you don't go and all of that. I was like, okay, that, uh, let me think. Let me think about that. Mm -hmm. And I went home <laughs> to my Somali mother. She was like, nah, man, you're not, you're not going. <laughs> she, <laughs> you're not going nowhere. So I was like, I had to, you know, like sweet talk her and make it and explain her. Listen, this is something I really have to do if I want to no. go to Medina and study. This is something that is connected to it. She said, no, I had to go to my auntie. Mm. And then she sweet talked her sister, you know. What I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but that, nowadays she's like, Alhamdulillah, I'm so happy that you did it, that you took no. that step. And she sees now that it's easier for me to live here, no. knowing the Arabic language, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, so is that that brother who told you that it was in Alexandria? Was that Hanif? No, 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 no. That was in Switzerland. This was a, a brother named Adnan. Uh, may Allah protect him. He's Bosnian. Oh, okay, because the first, the first year, I mean, I actually learned Arabic in Alexandria, not in Cairo. MashaAllah. So I was there in Al Mandara. You went Isbah? Yeah, I went Isbah, exactly. Ayah, yeah. MashaAllah. I even worked there. I was uh, at the secretary for <laughs> like, the second year. Ayah. Okay, so good. So in terms of uh, okay, once you have you. Okay, actually, you learn. Okay, you learn in in Egypt. So, what was the method? What was the merkaz, the method they used they to uh, to study? So, I went to Merkaz Al Ibana, and okay. I, I let me explain. 
I when I came to Egypt, I went to a, a qarya called Markaz Badr. I don't know if you heard about mm-hmm. that, but it's not even it's not far from uh, Sheikh Raslan's place. Mm-hmm. So I was there for the first seven weeks, and that's where I met Hanif. But to uh, answer your question, it was a village, and now I come from a city, so I didn't really feel the vibe. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't feeling like. Uh, can can I tell a short story so people feel like what it means to leave? Mm-hmm. Like I arrived three in the morning in Cairo. Okay, mm-hmm. I knew nobody. It was just me, my jawal, my phone, and I had to meet a guy that I never ever met no. at three in the morning. So this guy, mashallah, he was there, but you still like you know like I'm in a new country. Don't be don't be don't be stupid. Don't trust everybody from the get go. You know. No. So this guy, we were driving like three hours. This guy, what he didn't sleep. Mm-hmm. He was driving, Achi, I'm not joking. He was driving and he was passing out like while driving. <laughs> I did experience that, man. That was crazy. And I was with my family. I yeah, think. bro. He was like, oh, la 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 la. I was like, Achi, Achi, stop. <laughs> Just <laughs> sleep. Just sleep you know what boy, I'm like, like, we yeah. don't need to die for this. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I don't want to die before I've learned Arabic. You know? <laughs> yeah. So he stopped somewhere in the desert. So I'm with all my belongings somewhere in the desert. This guy is sleeping. We're in the middle of nothing. Then I arrived at Marcus Brother somewhere. It was Friday morning. I met brothers that I never met ever. I slept in one of their room and then I woke up for Juma. I, I never forget that. And mm-hmm. that's something that people need to think about. It's a motivation, but this will happen if you go. Mm-hmm. I woke up. I was like, yo, I'm in Egypt, man. I'm in somebody's room that I never met. No. I just woke up and I went to the living room and they were like, Salaamu Alaikum, Akhi. Kif Halik, and how, how's everything? You feel good? And I was like, man, this is my life now, man. I gotta man up. You gotta like, you gotta, yeah. you gotta be a man. It's, you yeah. know, you're not at home. You gotta become who you're gonna become, inshallah, you know? Definitely. And that's something that in the beginning is really gonna get to you psychologically. Like, are you tough enough? Mm-hmm. Are you really about it? Because Back home, everybody's like, I want to seek knowledge. I want to be mm-hmm. this. I want to be that. But once you're confronted and you have no way out, it's, it shows who you are. Mm-hmm. So that was, uh, I, I think, very important to mention for people that actually mm-hmm. seek to go. Mm-hmm. But what okay. was your main question, Akhi? Yeah. Uh, so I know in Marcus Brother, they didn't have a... I mean, they, they did have class. I actually visited uh, Marcus Brother and Sheikh Ali Musa, etc. Uh, mm-hmm. And I knew... So basically, the question was, what what was the method of uh, mm. of mm. Uh, of of them teaching? You yes. know, the method they used. Yes, in Marcus Bader, from what I remember, they had a book from Imam Saud, mm-hmm. like the mm-hmm. Mahad book of uh, Jamet Imam Saud, which is in Riyadh. Mm-hmm. Uh, me, I never joined the Marcus because the Qaeda was the rule was it had to be six people minimum to start a new mustawa. So I was mm. there for seven weeks and not like no six yeah. people showed up. Yeah, that was the problem. So I was like, we went to Cairo, me, Hanif, and another brother. We, we visited another brother. And then I saw Cairo. It was city life. You mm-hmm. had a lot of opportunities. You had like stores everywhere. And I'm from the city. So I was like, man, this is nice, man. I want to be out here, you know. Mm-hmm. And... <clears throat> Then I, I went back to Marcus Brother, I played Istikhara, and then I moved to Cairo. And in Cairo, I joined Ibana. So no. to come back to your question, Ibana has their own books, right. which are very good, mashallah. They mm-hmm. have very good books. Uh, so I started, I went there to sign up, and he told me I should not do Muqaddim, I should start with Tamhidi, which is the second level, if you want to if you wanna say, uh, no. name it like that. Mm-hmm. So they start with like conversation, basic words, basic tasrif, you know, which was very nice, mashallah. Um, in my opinion, and that's my own opinion, it was a little bit too slow because it was class work. But uh, it, the curriculum is very good for somebody that has time to be there. Ibana is, in my opinion, the best opinion, uh, best markers you can go. Okay. So they had their own books. They would go every day through a story through words he would write down all the words he would write down all the tasrifat he would try to explain you what is a qalam he would do like qalam 
Qalam, and he would ride with it, you know. So, mashallah, they have a very good tariqah. Egyptian, mashallah, Allah bless them, man. They they born teachers. No, definitely. Okay, so let me let me refute your statement just right now, right? How many marakas do you go to in in Egypt? I went to only Ibana, like a official okay, market so only Ibana. So, uh, so how can you say he's the best one then? Uh, because I knew people from Furqan, I knew people from Kalima, I knew oh, people okay. from Fajr, and I've seen what they do. It's mm-hmm. not like I'm, and I was like, from what Ibana gives you, and this is, by the way, for a person that understands Arabic, like he no. doesn't come with zero. Mm-hmm. I'm talking from my perspective. Okay, you know what I'm saying? That's, for that's people that thing. come. Yeah, I, because if you come with nothing, I think like something like Kalima or like, uh, I don't know, private teaching maybe is better mm. because you need to start with Alif, Ba, that's yeah. something else, you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. I tell you that because my wife, she actually graduated from the whole curriculum of Alibana. And, and, and before that, she did, uh, you know, Kutub al Arabiya bin Yadayk, like six Mustawiyat in Al Isbah. So. Mashallah. Because of that, Alibana was good. But then my sisters in law they came to Alibana from zero and it was just a, mm. it was just a, it was just a complete mess, you know? But uh but yeah, yeah, that's yeah. that's why I wanted to to uh to nah, add to that. That's a good reputation, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so what I wanted what I wanted to say as well is that Alhamdulillah that you mentioned that point because many times a lot of brothers they, they misunderstand the like, for example, at the time I was in Egypt, for example, there was a lot of brothers when, when we were in, in Al Isbah, they didn't even know Arabic yet. And they were thinking, well, hey, let's go with Sheikh, Sheikh, you know, let's go to Merkaz Badr. Uh, you mm-hmm. know, we're going to seek knowledge there. And, and, we, and it was like, bro, they don't, they don't even have Arabic. Look at where you are right now. You are benefiting from yeah. that. Just learn Arabic and take step by step what you need to do. Like, what will you rush now? But right. like, it's like, it's a little Yemen there. It's a little... You know, a little, uh, like a little Mauritania. And sometimes it's about, like a lot of students when they start up, uh, start, uh, start up their, their studies, it's about the mm. hype, what everyone is doing. And this, they, don't, they don't have a, you know, s- books that they need to go through before they even, yes. you know, try and go to a, a, a sheikh or try to, to, to learn this book or, you know, and it's, mm-hmm. it's a big problem. It's like, for example, another brother, uh, a French brother, right? He was in a um, long time ago. He was in uh, in the Maj, and he didn't know Arabic. And I he know. used to tell me every time they will open Kitab al Tawheed or you know a book on Aqidah, I will feel like, okay, yeah, I want to start, I want to start this book. But you don't even know Arabic. Yet. Like, why would you step, you know, jump steps yeah. basically? So that was a, a really nice point that you that you mentioned. But yeah, it happened to me as well when I went to when I was in Isbah and I and I went to visit Cairo. And mm-hmm. I was like, yo, like, you know, we, I'm from Barcelona as well. I've lived in Paris. I've, you know, seen New York. So all of the main cities, you feel like, okay, yeah, Cairo, I think, is the, is the, is the place to be. Yeah. And there's a lot of opportunities yeah, to go for, for people who are, you know, wanting to go to, to Egypt. I think Cairo is the best place. You know, you have all of these, yeah. you know, different ch- choices in terms of Marrakesh. Yeah. And you can try out, mm-hmm. start three months here, three months there if you don't like it. The difference I can do the Muqarana Baina I can compare between Medina and Egypt. Mm-hmm. In Egypt, you are really like if you go with your own money, if you go with your own juhd, you can choose I go to Ibana for this. We used to have an I you probably heard about him, Ustad Mahmoud Shafi'i. Mm-hmm. He used to he was basically he was the best teacher I've ever had so far. It was so abuse. You could organize yourself as you want. You could be like, this year, I'm going to memorize the Quran. The next mm-hmm. year, I'm going to finish the Markaz. Mm-hmm. The, the third year, I'm going to start to see what the rules you have. So no. you can go by your own pace. As if in Medina, when you come, the first dars in the Mahad is, Hada kitabun and Hada masjidun. You no. better know what Hada means and what Masjid means. Because mm. we're not going to tell you what Hada no. We're not gonna break it down. What that's harful ha, harful that. Nobody's gonna tell you that. Everybody's mm. expecting you iqra, no. read. No, no, no. You know what I'm saying? So, in Egypt, you can do a taqsil mm. on your pace, mm-hmm. and it's a cheap country. And you, I remember my roommate, he was an Egyptian. Mm-hmm. He was a doctor in Lugha. Like if I had an issue, I was like, Achi, I just knock at his door. Like, um, 
تعال وات از اكسبلين مي واي از هي مرفوع واي از هي منصوب اني ولا تعال يا عم خش تو يو يو نو تعال يو اكسبلين يو نو سي اقعد سو يو ويل اكسبلين يو سو يو دون يعني از نوت يو دون هاف ان هير مدينه بت ان ايجيبت از جست يور بيس مان يو هاف نو بريشر نو 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 ديفينيتلي سو اي مين Again, like this is not for everyone, you know. Some some people they are used to like academic whole organized study is studies. Mm. Like me, I got to mm. a point right now where I'm I I feel like I am able to do that right now. But when I got to Egypt, I I couldn't you know sometimes I couldn't I couldn't do that. Like I would see like Libyan brothers and I would see them in their house yeah. like writing you know with five books open and this. I'm like, Panda, I, I wish I was like self disciplined like that where you know you just. Yeah. say okay i need to achieve this and so i'm just going to go and do it you know when i hear people like yeah, yeah i taught i taught arabic myself i would be like how can you teach arabic yourself like right now i understand because i have all what i need to do that or you know i mm-hmm. memorize quran by myself stuff like that i couldn't mm-hmm. you know i couldn't like visualize that but yeah definitely yeah. i mean cairo and medina that's what i always hear medina you kind of i mean depending on, on how as well how you are in medina because i know some students when we were in egypt they would just leave to medina and uh, yeah. just sleep wherever they slept i don't know in the masjid or whatever and they would just study in the masjid but in terms of going to hey. the jamia and everything yeah you you got to be got to be organized i mean you got to follow the curriculum i guess yeah yeah, yeah you no. you got to you know and you got to build your life outside of the jamia Mm. You know what I'm saying like okay I'm going to take this dars in aqida yom al arbi'a and khamis mm-hmm. then I'm going to take maybe a halaq of quran which is every day after asr and mm-hmm. then you got homework and then you got to revise you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying in egypt is I'm going to do quran that's my that's my day you know what I mean yeah. I wake up I read on the sheikh maybe I go and you could egypt is lit okay egypt is masha I miss egypt a lot yeah. yeah me too I think it's the best place to as you say to man up and to yeah become mature in terms of life and in terms of knowledge and and everything yeah it's definitely a good place there's a lot of bad but it's a lot of good at the same time it's just a crazy yes. of feelings and coming to yeah. to feelings actually i wanted to ask you you know over the period that you was focusing only on arabic like what was your feelings like in the beginning in the middle and at the end so in the beginning I just felt like okay you got to deal with a lot of personal issue you got to you can see people they like vi- like they like violate your boundaries Switzerland is a very conservative country people is like oh, you know they they quiet in the bus yeah. you don't hear nobody talk mm-hmm. so when you go to when you go to Egypt is the ax you got yeah. eight year old kids screaming around and selling bread and I was like okay you know that's <laughs> you know that's life okay on the, life on is the bike with the big old, with the big old, yeah. big old bread <laughs> Yeah, right. So that part mm, it depends on how you take it. If you like, خلاص, that's it. I want to change. So you're going to appreciate everything that happens to you cuz you're going to add it in your bag of experience. Mm-hmm. But if you come with like, you know, I don't, you know, I need a bathroom that is like that and I need a ki- you're going to get a very hard smack in your face culturally. No. No, no, no. So alhamdulillah me I took it as uh as a challenge for my own self mm-hmm. so i used to go out as i told you in the beginning i had seven weeks where i had no no school so mm-hmm. i used to go out and the egyptian are very open people so i was just like they they ask you and tamin fail nigeria or less they always in nigeria so people like i don't know what <laughs> so i used to be switzerland okay and then how that's how a uh, conversation would start how yeah. you swiss i'm like i was raised there but you know and they would correct me and they would you know they would tell me la 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 you don't say it like that you say like and then i would ask him what's what's the meaning of i don't mm. know like a glass they would tell me you know cats or whatever okay no. okay and that's how i challenged my own self because i was like i can't just wait the you know the people that tell me okay now you can start to learn arabic i have to do something for my own you know no no and uh, that's in the beginning Mm-hmm. Then when I moved to Cairo and started actually like but I, when I went to Cairo I mm-hmm. saw Ustad Mahmoud Al Shafi. No. This guy he just changed my like he changed my whole perspective on the Lughat Al Arabiya. No. 
this guy, you know him. He's very confident. Mm -hmm. He has a strong voice, yeah. and he ha like he, he knows the Arabic language. He's not like a guy that has shek sometimes. No, he knows. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. So him, <laughs> when I saw when I saw him, I looked at him and I was like, man, I need to. I want to know the lugha like him, man. No. He looks very firm. You know, and he used to quote Abiyat of Shi'r, and he used yeah. to quote Alfiyat ibn Malik, and he used to quote a lot of stuff. I was like, mashallah, you know, and I changed the Ibana, moved to Cairo, and I used, I started from the first day I started to go to his Ajrumiya classes, just mm -hmm. to see, like, to understand, just to add, because in the beginning, you really have, you have time, Akhi. you don't have a lot of things to do. No. So I just, I used to go there, I used to stay the Ajrumiya, I used to take some sarf. Not understanding a lot, no. but I used to get like an expression, how, how he expresses, when he uses which words, in what context. That's how I learn languages, by the way. My, like my tariq of learning languages is, is, a, is a little weird, I would say. No. Like, um, but this is, how, uh, this is how I've learned. This is, that was my middle part. And then towards the end, where I was able to like, mashallah, you know, I can get myself around by myself i don't need no uh it felt great i felt accomplished you know what i'm saying like yeah. you know like i feel good man like yeah, yeah. I, it's very important for for a man to be somewhere and you're able to express yourself that was mm -hmm. one of my main struggles like if you can't express yourself it's very hard because you're trying to tell people something in the way you want them to understand and they like Nah, nah, what, what is he talking about, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it makes sense in my mind, but I can't tell you, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so what are, uh, what are the, how many aha moments do you have throughout the process in terms of learning the Arabic language? A lot, a lot. Um, especially in uh, Nahu. Mm -hmm. I remember Ustad Mahmoud, he was like, Al-asal, I mean, fi raf al-dhamma wa... في الفتحة في النصب الفتحة وفي الجرة الكسرة. So the next couple of days they took the مثنى. You know. So he said جاء طالبان. ما على ما ترفع هنا. I was like ضمة. You know. He told us a couple of days ago. You know. What is he? What is he asking? He said then we had some Kazakhi and Russian. They were very strong in the Nah in the Arab. No. So it's like the alif. I was like, is somebody going to tell him that he's wrong right now? Because like, he just he just said Alif, you know? No. And then he explained, and I was like, okay, this is not just Fatha Kasra Dhamma. It's Alif, it's Ya, it's Mamnu'a min al sarf And it's, I was like, okay, okay. No. Like that, you really need to memorize that. You can't just be like, because, uh, you know, it's not just Fatha Dhamma Kasra. No. So that was, that. that's something that just came up in my mind. But I had a, a lot, a lot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, mainly when you have different languages in your mind, it does yeah, yeah. a lot of things connect. Okay, so what are the, the books you had daily in, you know, throughout your journey of learning the Arabic language? If you had uh, any, like, always with you? I would say the Sharh al mm -hmm. That's something that was uh, with me a lot of times. Mm -hmm. Then uh, I would say the Quran with the uh, tajweed, with the color, like you know, with the with the kalimat on the side. Oh, the 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 orange little book. Yeah, let me. Where is it, man? You know the the the, the typical the Syrian one, the tajweed one. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I thought you were talking about that little orange. Uh, is is a dictionary of the Quran or something like that. But yeah, yeah. Oh no, no, no! I'm talking about the straight mu the the mushaf himself, the the Quran oh, okay. himself. You know which one I'm talking yeah, about, right? That... The little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, the kalimat yeah. al-Quran. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so what, what about? Give us a little bit of context of the Sharh al mumti The Sharh al mumti uh, from what I know, which is a little, is that is a talib from the Maj. He basically took Ajrumiya. And he made it. A, he made a muqaddima out of it. Like a, mm -hmm. how you say that? How you say muqaddima in English? Yeah, I don't like know. An introduction a, kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So is that book the blue and blue and red one? Yeah. Yes. Now, okay. by the way, they have also like uh, mujallat, like the hardcover. They have it too. Oh, okay. So uh, he broke it down. Mashallah, he made it very good. He made like jadawil. 
ولا لايك mm-hmm. مثلا الرفع الرفع mm-hmm. يكون بالضمه وبالواو اند ذس اند ذات هي جيفز ذا ديفرنت ذا حالات اوف ذا رفع يعني ميكس ا جدول اند ات ذا اند اوف ذا باب هي جيفز يو لايك سم لايك تايب حوار نات حوار لايك يو جات ا فيل ذا بلانكس وي وور ايفر يو كويز كان اوف ليرن ان ا باب يس اكزاكتلي اوكي سو اتس بيسيكلي فور ذوز هو دونت نو از is like al ajrumiya basically like an explanation of al ajrumiya yes. oh, okay so yes, grammar book yes but ajrumiya is like yani if you open up sheikh sheikh uthamin's book is very heavy like you know it's mm. a lot no 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 and no. this he made it like it's khafif you know it's for somebody that just started it's very good to get a taste of nahw yeah 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 okay alhamdulillah yeah. so so well obviously i was going to say read your arabic Conversational skills from one to ten without being humble. I don't like that stuff. <laughs> no, I would say 9.5. I can't, I can't be Ashara because no. when I hear like Mashaikh here that are strong in Loga, you'd be like, nah, man, I gotta step my game up. This is, yeah, this yeah, is yeah. not real Arabic that, I'm, that I speak. But I would say from the time period that I put the work in till now, comparing myself, and I don't like to do that. I like to compare myself, in, especially in like this type of things with the people that are better than me. But mm-hmm. comparing myself with the umum that mm-hmm. is here right now, I would say 9.5. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Like when you hear yeah. it happened to me when I went to, to visit Sheikh Raslan. At that time, yeah. I was like, okay, I know how to, I know, I understand Arabic. I know how to speak Arabic. I went to his khutbah. I was like, <laughs> I got out. I was like, I don't understand Arabic still. Like, I don't, I need to go back to yeah, the roots. But yeah, yeah. definitely. Tayyip, so, so, Tayyip, ma hiya, ma kanat al, al durus allati kunt tuhib al akthar? Jama'atan wa la, aw khas? Binisbati ana, أقول أن الدروس الخاصة أستفيد أكثر لماذا؟ لأن تستطيع أن تمشي بسرعتك يعني ما no. تنتظر مثلا الأخ الفلاني حتى يفهم <تصفيق> أن المعرب لها أربع حالات no, no, no. يعني no. فأنت فهمتها بعد ممكن شرح واحد فتقول no. ماشي يعني نستمر no. فبنسبة أنا أفضل هذا لكن فيه فوائد جم... يعني للجميع مثلا أحيانا أنت ما تفكر عن سؤال معين نعم. ويأتي هذا الفلان ويسأل سؤال تقول أوه هذا السؤال جيد ما نعم. ما جاءني نعم. هذه الفكرة نعم. فأقول على حسب على حسب يعني شخصيتك لكن نعم. بالنسبة أنا الخاص طيب so basically you prefer private over group classes because yeah. I mean I think at the beginning is good group classes because you feel kind of like okay well what are we doing but then once you once you're on your pace uh, you just need to yeah keep going like i can't yeah. really stop it yeah but it does benefit yes. a lot when someone asks a question you'll be like, oh yeah i was i actually meant to ask that so thanks for asking yeah yes okay, so, yes okay so what will you say is the or at least for for you what is the hardest thing or the hardest part of learning the arabic language I wouldn't, it dep- I didn't, I don't see a hard part because it depends for what you're doing it. Okay, let's say you're doing it for business or you're doing it for just to learn a language. You might run into like, oh, man, you know, like I could do this back home and I can do, mm-hmm. but if you're doing it for like, for your own purpose, like for talab al-ilm, to understand your religion, to do that. I don't see how it's like it's gonna become hard. The only hard part that I can imagine that people would have is coming with like from China, and mm. you just gotta the whole culture just changed. But it wasn't for me like that. So for myself, I didn't see no really, I didn't see no hard parts to be mm. honest. Yeah, in Egypt is the first time I met like brothers from Japan and. China. Yeah. You'll be like, are you speaking? Naam, I speak Arabic. Oh, oh, Yeah. So, uh, okay. So, the last two questions. The first one is, how of an impact has had the the Arabic language in your life, and how's your life different now? It had a great impact. I remember praying in uh, Egypt. I moved to Scandinavia after six months to a Tahfid program just for Quran. 
Or the one and in, I remember uh, in near the the Bahar. Aywa, kilo one twenty one. Okay. No. Aywa, the last one they used to call it. Aywa. So, uh, so I was there and I remembered. I know. The last one they say. The last one. Aywa, the last one. Okay. I thought you said the sub the last one. And I was like, I don't even know who he is. Yeah. Yeah. So I remember in Cairo, my teacher was like, "Abd al-Fatah, qiraatuk al-da'ifa in the Quran." Right? I was like, "Man, like really?" Like, so I left the Skandaria, and I remember the Quran. I advise a lot of people. Actually, people sleep on that. The Quran opens up a lot. Like mm-hmm. it gives you, the Quran opens up your tongue. It makes gets used to speak in Arabic if you read it a lot. No. Is 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 a, is a mu'jiza. Is a, is a mm. miracle. What happens when you really stick to Quran? So once you started to understand the Quran, I remember because in Sukhul Akhir you had a lot of people with the qiraat. You have people mm. doing learning the qiraat, memorizing shatibi and all of that. Mm. So that environment, and once you started to understand the ma'na, yani the 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 the, the man of the ayah, mm. you were like in salat. The, the whole salat changed. The whole prayer changed. Yeah, you know what I mean. You just feel like, Subhanallah. You know, I ask Allah that I'm not one of them. I ask mm. Allah that I'm one of them. Yeah, like mm. you really feel that in salah. Yeah, yeah. you can actually that, pray that as while a you're Muslim. Praying. Yes, yes. Mm. And that as a Muslim, that's the masdar al That's the go back to for our religion. Mm. If you don't, if you don't have that connection <coughs> to the Quran, where you actually understand. You might, you, I mean, you're gonna live a healthy Muslim life, but you're not really gonna feel the Quran, and that's very important. That 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 little halawa to iman, that sweetness of yes. of the faith, having faith now. Yes. So, so it I, changed my life a lot. Actually. It changed my life a lot. Mm-hmm. So how was how was there? How was Sukhul Akhira? Anyways, do you uh, benefit <laughs> from it? How long do you stay there for? Uh, I was there for six months. Okay. When I mm-hmm. went there, I was literally reading like, taba, 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 mm-hmm. like I would read like, not confident. I had no, like I didn't know how to read. No. So I went there for six months. It was the roughest experience that I ever made, but it was the best experience that I ever made. You need to imagine like a masjid, like a pretty good, pretty big masjid. Mm-hmm. We we used to sleep on a second floor, like 400 people. Okay, I'm telling you, four like the mm-hmm. Ramadan was like 500 people, and outside of Ramadan was like 250 to 350. <laughs> you had like you had like when when a hundred people wanted to sleep, 150 wouldn't. Yeah. When 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 300 people are sleeping, you had like 80 people snoring. You know what I'm saying? And we had the the, vent, the fan was like the 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 little thing on the wall. Yeah. And it was so hot. We had the mosquito net. It was a, such a rough experience, but it made me it made me step down from, like I I became very humble. I mm-hmm. started to like really like, if you run if you want to have success in life, you gotta feel you gotta go through this mm-hmm. because when you read about the imma like Imam Ahmed, Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, and I'm not even this experience has, is no comparison to them, but yeah, they had to go to hardship to yeah. taste the sweet. You know what I mean? So I was there for six months, and I went there with like just Am and just Tabarak, and I only say this in this interview because I want to benefit other people. I would never mention it, so, mm-hmm. and I was able to finish the whole Quran in six months. Mashallah. So it is possible if you give oh, the Quran two pa- time. Two pages a day, right? Two, three pages. No, a day. I reached I reached the average of like six pages. Okay. Because you're doing it from Fajr till you go to sleep. It's not you don't do nothing else. You know? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. In the other beginning, than, you struggle. Yeah. Other than going to the Bahr a little bit, empty your mind. Yeah. Even that, in the beginning, you were like, man, I, I don't have time. And then people introduce you to the Bahr. You're like, okay, that's nice. I should come <laughs> here, here and there. You know. No. Okay, I wanted to ask you. So all of this. Because I was thinking right now because of me. Because I always thought about okay, I'm just gonna go sukul akhirah, but then. I was married, so mm-hmm. you know it's kind of like that sticky situation. So all of this, all of this, uh, you know, journey that you explain to us, was it ka'azab, yani? Yes, yes, it was ka'azab. 
And uh, well, let me. As I know brothers for that, people that who don't understand as a as a single man, even, as yeah. a single. Yeah. Yes. Um, yes, I did that journey as a as a single man, mm -hmm. and uh, the journey as a single man is different. <laughs> You know, I used to see it with brothers that I'm married, like, man, I need to go get, get groceries. I'm like, really? Yeah, yeah. You got to do that every day. <laughs> really? But, I you know, fooled, you man. Like, <laughs> what you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's definitely different. But so, like, Sukul Akhir, Akhi, I know brothers that were like living out there, renting an apartment for like, I don't know, $20 or $40 a month. Yeah. And they used to live out there with their wives. Mm -hmm. So it's possible, it's possible, but it's definitely different. You're not being in the like you don't sleep in that environment. You go back to your home cooked food, which is very beautiful. Mm -hmm. But it's not as the same. Um, <laughs> I'm imagining yeah. the brother, the brother who's married, he comes down in the morning, all fresh, looking good. Yeah, it was good. It was good. You're like, oh yeah, what's up, man? Like, yeah, bro. Well, it was rough. Okay? Mosquitoes <laughs> used to, they used to destroy you, man. If you had like your foot out of the mosquito net. <laughs> Your food was gone the next morning, man. <laughs> Mashallah. Mashallah. And they feel yeah. that, that Switzerland blood as well. Oh, that's this new to me. Okay, so last <laughs> last question is what what will you give as an advice to the person that acknowledges the, the importance of learning the Arabic language? However, he didn't start yet for whatever reason. Um I can only speak from a man perspective. And I would say a man has to experience he has to do these things. Is not. I respect brothers that did the work back home, mm -hmm. but for a man that grew up, especially in the West, you gotta go. You gotta go and get it. You know, you gotta mm -hmm. have that mentality. You gotta go and get it. Suffer, not suffer in a bad way, but like you gotta experience <laughs> that. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta experience that. You gotta go there. You gotta make this. I made my best friends now. I met them in Egypt. You know no. what I mean? So, the, you, if you want to seek knowledge, there is no way you're going to go around the Arabic language. Even mm. if you're from England, you're from America, you got, you're from France, and everybody's translating you every other book. Mm -hmm. You're never going to be able to understand the deen of Allah unless you give time and respect to the Arabic language. Mm -hmm. And from what I used to hear from the Mashaykh, the pastor like Sheikh Uthameen, Sheikh Muhammad Aman, mm -hmm. they say what, yani, the stronger you are in Arabic language, the stronger you're going to become in religious matters, in fiqh, in hadith, in whatever issues, usul. Mm -hmm. So I would advise to the man in a very, like, I'm not trying to challenge people, but man up and do it. Because mm -hmm. it's only going to benefit you, even if you stop later on. As I know a lot of brothers, they had private issues. They they had to stop the, this journey. They had took a lot of experiences as a man, as how to raise a family, as how to create business, make money. All of that, you learn that through that journey because you are on your own. So mm -hmm. I advise the brothers to do it, to go to Egypt because it's... Is uh, from pricing way the price and the quality you get. I I I, I never heard from a better place. Mm -hmm. So just do it, man. Just do it, as Nike says. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay, Alhamdulillah. So, uh, man, thank you very much, man. I'm I'm actually glad that uh that I have like, you know, I wouldn't say actual students of knowledge, but uh, but yeah, like just people people that are living it basically. You know, to make yeah. people, to make sure that, because uh, a lot of, I, I receive messages of people who be like, oh, subhanAllah, please keep, keep like finding brothers and, and sisters who have been through the process. And it, you know, it motivates people, it motivates people. And even myself, I can say that when I was starting out, I, I, mm -hmm. the same you said, a brother when I was in France told me, oh, why don't you go to Egypt to study? I was like, Egypt? What the hell? What am I about to do in Egypt? How I'm <laughs> I was thinking about studying, you know, Arabic here or whatever. So yeah, definitely traveling, yeah. Uh, you know, as the shi'r of uh, Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah said, and I'm not going to quote it because I didn't even memorize it, but it has five fawaid, and, uh, and mm. it has fawaid in general. That's the point that I'm trying to make. It has a lot of fawaid, the, the fact of traveling. So, um, so yeah, man, thanks for this interview. Uh, I appreciate it, man. And you're a fiqh, 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 you're a fiq
and uh, I'm in Jamia. And hopefully we we meet soon, inshallah, with the brother Hanif. Inshallah, <laughs> inshallah. You gotta come and make Umrah, bro. I got you, inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah. طيب. So now I know I have a I have a dorm where to sleep when I go there. Yeah, bro. Just yesterday, a Swiss brother came for Umrah and he slept in my bed. So you oh, okay. are you welcome, Akhi. Baiti, inshallah. Baiti. Inshallah, barakallah fiq. Okay, so assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.